Each cacao bean has a genetic flavor potential that is either expressed or depressed as it moves along cocoa post-harvest processing, which involves fermentation, drying, storage, and other handling operations. Unlocking this genetic flavor potential is critical to the final cocoa bean quality and its value in the finer flavor segment of the cocoa marketplace. Fully mature, ripe, disease-free pods are carefully harvested without damaging the flower cushion or the pod to yield sufficient quantities of beans to fill a fermentation box. To avoid losses from disease, pods are opened within one to three days with a pod cracker or a mallet without damaging the beans. The beans are extracted and sorted on a clean surface and any diseased, germinating or damaged beans removed. The wet cocoa beans are then carefully placed into wooden boxes and covered with fresh banana leaves and jute sacks to insulate the top of the box to conserve heat. The Cocoa Research Center has optimized the use of styrofoam coolers for smaller scale fermentations that yield equivalent bean quality to the larger wooden boxes. Fermentation usually lasts between five to eight days, depending on variety, weather conditions, and time during the cocoa season. During fermentation, the bean mass is turned after two and four days to facilitate aeration and to allow uniform fermentation. During fermentation, there's a succession of microorganisms that generate heat, resulting in temperatures reaching as high as 50 to 52 degrees Celsius. This allows microbial products to permeate into the seed, breaking down proteins into flavor and aroma precursors. The end point of fermentation can be determined by visual assessment of the beans, externally and internally, odors observed during fermentation, measuring temperature and the pH of the outer tester and inner cotyledon. From the fifth day, visual cues are checked by cutting a sample of beans longitudinally to observe the inside. The inner surfaces of a well-fermented bean should have well-defined ridges, as well as a light pink to brown color on the inside with a darker brown color towards the outside. The odor of the fermenting mass also indicates when to end fermentation. Fresh fruit smells at the start of fermentation change to distinct alcoholic notes by the first turning. This changes to a vinegar-like note by the second turning and towards the optimal end point. An important smell to avoid is ammonia and putrid or rotting notes. The end point is more accurately determined by measuring the temperature of the fermenting mass and the pH of the bean. At the end of fermentation, the moisture content of the whole bean is approximately 60% and this must be reduced to 6.5 to 7.5% before the cocoa can be stored, sold or transported. Drying also continues oxidative chemical reactions that reduce the astringency and the bitterness of the bean. Sun drying is carried out on wooden floors in cocoa houses. For sun drying, freshly fermented beans are spread on the floor of a cocoa house each day to a depth of not less than five centimeters and mixed regularly by walking through the layer of beans, making small ridges and furrows. The beans are exposed to the sun only for three to four hours during the first few days, but this time is gradually increased as drying proceeds. Artificial drying can be used alone, but more often is used after sun drying has gradually reduced the moisture content to approximately 20%. A large mechanical dryer usually comprises a burner with a blower. The hot air passes through small holes in the wooden floor through a layer of cocoa beans, which are turned regularly with wooden rakes or paddles to ensure even drying. Regardless of the drying method used, the rate of drying is critical to the final quality, having direct implications on physical, chemical, sensory, and food safe quality of the beans. If the moisture is reduced too much, the shells and beans become too brittle and break. If the moisture is too high, mold growth occurs during storage. A well-fermented and dried Trinidad cocoa bean is plump in appearance and when cut, shows a chocolate brown cotyledon with clearly defined internal ridging. The bags used to store cocoa beans should be labeled, food safe, clean, strong enough to discourage pest contamination and withstand transport. Cleaning of fermented and dried beans has an impact on the consistency and purity. Excellence in quality starts with the selection of suitable cocoa varieties as well as ensuring optimal fermentation, drying and storage. All parties in the cocoa chain have their part to play in ensuring that consumers of premium chocolates made from Trinidad and Tobago cocoa are provided with a product that is safe, wholesome, full of flavor, and most enjoyable to eat.